Galaxy for Radio Shalom Montreal and uh, we have the pleasant uh, presence today of Gilles Rosenberg. She is seen here in Israel and throughout the world today like some sort of a hero. Is that the way you see yourself? No, absolutely not. Uh, you know, growing up my childhood hero was Yoni Netanyahu and uh, you know, there's, there, I'm not anywhere near that level. Um, I was just trying to do what I felt was right and um, and no, I, I don't see myself as a hero. I think I think I did what every normal person should want to do, um, which is to fight an evil that exists in this world. So I, I think it, for me, I see myself as a normal person. Don't you think that there was that there were other ways of combating the situation? I, I understand that you wanted to help the Christians, the uh, Yazidis, and so on. Don't you think there were other ways, like some people try to rescue them by, by giving uh, ransoms, paying their freedom for their freedom and so on? Don't you think that could have been a way? Absolutely. There's many different ways of, of helping people there on the ground, and, and none of them are, are better or worse than any other. For me, seeing that um, they had women on the front line in Syria in, with, with the YPG, uh, that was something that I wanted to be a part of. Um, I felt fully capable of, of taking part in that role and, and I wanted to actively fight Daesh. At the time when you left, the whole world, and we could see it on Facebook, was kind of worried for you. Did you have that impression and how did your parents, your family, your relatives, your, your close uh, uh, friends uh, reacted to this decision? Right. Um, Basically, by the time most people knew that I was in Syria, um, my communication had been cut off by the YPG. Um, so I was not able to communicate with people. I had no idea that there was even a story out there that I had been captured or possibly been killed. Um, it, took, it took a matter of days or even a week or two before, before I knew that that even existed. And, uh, you know, I had messages from, from close friends, um, from the Canadian government um, that wanted proof of life and uh, you know I was reading messages from friends that were writing to me as if I was already dead and uh, hoping that I wasn't but writing to me like I hope this isn't true but I you know this is what I always wanted to tell you and it was uh, it was really emotional to read that and really hard to keep moving forward knowing that I wouldn't be able to communicate with loved ones the way that I would like to but um, for me, I had made that decision to be there, and uh, I had to keep moving forward in what I saw was my path. Have you met other foreigners or even other Jewish person trying to help the, the Kurds? Um, there are, I mean, I, I did meet um, one other Jewish person. Um, Coming that, from where? Uh, that has a U.S. military background. Okay. Um, definitely more on the secular side, uh, but it, that, is also, that is also fighting there. Um, there was rumor of a uh, Jewish, Jewish person that had been in the IDF that was also in Syria. Um, I never met the person, I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but certainly there's, there are people, not necessarily on the front lines, but there are Jewish people that are helping the Kurds, uh, even as we speak. Have you seen any direct military involvement of the Israeli government there? No. Have you seen any indirect one, meaning that Israel was in some way trying to help the Kurds? No, no I, I haven't heard of anything specifically. No. During this ordeal, what was the worst time that you went through during those nine months? Um, I would say the front line in Syria, um, it was, it was really, I, it was freezing cold in the Syrian mountains in Rojava, um, like a bitter cold, pouring rain constantly, deep mud, just miserable conditions, and, uh, you know, you're pulling guard duty at all hours of the night or day, um, getting shot at, um, it was it was pretty miserable. Um, you know, I got 
sick, I got infections several times, um, and uh, you know there were there were some pretty pretty rough times where it really kind of pushes you to your limit, and you you realize you know you have to pull strength from from somewhere deeper inside you in order to keep going. Did you at any time regret your decision? No, never, never. I mean, there were times when I sort of lost motivation to an extent, but something always happened that would uh, re-energize me, whether it was driving through an area where there's refugee camps and you see all the displaced persons and refugees and women and children that have been affected by this and you are reminded of what you're fighting for. And, uh, you know, I would always pick myself up and keep moving forward. You didn't expect from the whole world not only the Jewish world, but the whole world, such a warm welcome. No, not at all, no. I thought I would just come back to, to Israel and, you know, sort of not be done with it, but, you know, look towards helping in a different way. But I, I didn't think it would be such a, a public event, my arrival back in Israel. We would like to thank uh, uh, Gilles Rosenberg for this wonderful and, and very special experience. And what is next for you, Gilles? What is next for me? Um, I'm going to continue helping women and children in Syria and Iraq, um, but in a different way. Like you, like you said, there's many different ways to help, and I want to move towards a more humanitarian or, or political side. I want to raise awareness of what's happening on the ground there. I think a lot of people don't know who the Kurdish people are, who the Yazidis and Christians are that are living there, and that they have such a, you know, a love and support for our nation and our country and um, you know, continue to help them in whatever way is possible. So. What is the message you have for the Canadians listening to you today? Um, just that I'm a very proud Canadian. Um, the Canadian government has been so supportive of the Kurdish people, so supportive of Israel, and um, you know, we didn't have that for a long time, and uh, Stephen Harper is just just outstanding, you know, like I'm, he makes me feel like such a proud, proud Canadian with uh, the foreign policy that he has right now. And, um, you know, it's, it's an honor to, to put the Canadian patch on my uniform when I was fighting. And uh, the Kurds had nothing but good things to say about the Canadians because we had, they had uh, 50 or more Canadian Special Forces training the Kurds. So we're one of the only governments in the world that actually sent people to help train and equip the, the Kurdish people, and that's something to be very proud of. Gilles Rosenberg, a big atzlacha to you. Toda. Toda.